I was a man with a very active imagination right from childhood and when uh, we were taught our favorite subjects of maths and physics it used to get even more active and then it used to take rest and catch up when biology or chemistry was being discussed in our times we didn't have any hard career goals the thumb rule was whichever exam you pass that's the one and uh, later in life in the age of 17 i joined merchant navy and for a 17 year old coming from a small town everything sweeps you off your feet it's invariably your first flight the big expanse of the seas the big ships the ports that you go to and the developed world it's much later in life that you realize that the people over there in the developed world around there they are the people who have made it like that they are not necessarily more intelligent than you and me but they work very hard to make their world better so the obvious question why can't we later with friends family you're sitting having a drink dinner and you're solving a lot of world problems who should be running the government who should be running the world who's right who's wrong and you debate all of that settle all of that happy have dinner go to sleep and the next day morning when you open the door the world is just the same where you left it yesterday nothing has changed months years go by and it's one of those days when i said look let me get up zip up and do what i can do what i can to make a little difference i always believed that human intelligence is very equitably distributed around the world better than oil and mineral and we have received our fair share what we do with that is of course up to us so i set out saying that i can develop technologies and let me get up and do just that now one of the things very early we learnt is when you go to solve a problem go for the simplest solution first the most obvious solution perhaps it's not been taken why do i say that this is a image of a crescent of a moon now we all know that this is not how the moon is shaped moon is like a ball and there is light shining from a torch from one direction that's why that part of the ball is lit up and you see this crescent if it is 5 o'clock in the morning then the sun is going to rise from there that's the east now this is not very difficult to understand but let me tell you about 30 years back standing on the wings of the ship i noticed that the crescent of the moon is pointing to the sun at all times and that is far easier than looking for the pole star and in these years i must have told this to few thousand people everybody understood this within 30 seconds but no one ever told me that they have read in any book so that reiterates my belief that go for the obvious solution first perhaps it's not been taken now we designed technology a floating barrier that stops all the solid waste and brings it to the side of a river i always believe that in the flowing waters of a river never use a drop of fuel the flowing waters will bring all the solid waste and bring it to the river bank right up to the river bank where you like to pick it up so we did this in 2015 then 2017 we installed this in 10 locations in a river called kuwam in chennai and as we speak today this technology is the maximum installed technology in the world 40 locations from tawang valley to tutukorin in tamil nadu we have installed the longest floating barrier in the world at 192 meters because it's designed with a very low drag force this has removed the maximum solid waste from the water in the year 2018 this has removed 22000 tons of solid waste it has stopped from reaching the oceans 10% of that is plastics 2165 tons if you zoom in on google earth you can see all these installations now this 22000 tons it has removed 
without using a single drop of fuel nil carbon footprint one more small detail this costed only 5% of the international technologies i'm not saying 5% less i'm saying only 5% of that and that's also the reason why you didn't hear about it before because i don't have advertising money for this this year we plan to step out to the open sea use renewable energy from the ocean and start cleaning the oceans uh, now what makes a person a good innovator if you imagine yourself standing on the zero of an x axis think of all your experience and your knowledge on the minus x side the school that you went college that you went to whatever you have learnt the magazines the podcasts all of that on the plus side think about it as your uninhibited imagination the zone of imagination now if we take a seasoned technocrat he has a lot of experience his minus x side is very rich lot of experience but he has stopped imagining many many years ago and that's why he doesn't know it you take a small kid the kid is very comfortable just sitting down and imagining things things that has not been taught and they have not seen but they don't have an understanding of what is a problem statement they don't have a connect with the uh, what is required so they don't innovate so after many many years of experience if you still have the bandwidth to go into just sit and imagine things that you have not been taught out of the box just let imagination go free let your mind breathe you will find that you are able to get ideas that can perhaps work they come back to the practical side and see whether you can make it work now 30 years back almost ships officer and in with a team to go down a ship's tank and clean up the sludge when i say go down i mean go down 20 meters through ladders almost like seven story building and it is dark slippery lot of it's all greasy the crude oil it smells of crude oil and you're go down the ladder and you have to clean it up it was all very very manual and i remember thinking that time that look this is no way to clean a crude oil tank sludge you can have gas any moment and that can knock you down and i told myself nobody makes a robot one day i am going to make one and that was 30 years after man had landed on the moon i was very very upset and i said i am going to make a robot some day and now 30 years later uh i have made one and this is uh, the only robot today hardly there are three robots like this in the world and this is the only robot that has a pump on the robot why it is slightly technical i'll quickly finish that the suction pressure of a pump is decided by nature you and me cannot change it it's only one bar we cannot change the suction we cannot change the vacuum level we cannot change the atmospheric pressure and those companies have taken use of using the suction pressure it's like trying to eat ice cream by sucking on a straw we put the pump right on the robot and use the discharge pressure now discharge pressure, pressure is technology today 50 bar tomorrow 500 bar that's mankind will keep improving on that so we did that so this is to eliminate mandatory risk is eliminate the long term health risks now we made one more robot this goes into the neighborhood petrol pump you know they have underground tanks this goes inside cleans those tanks opens arms then cleans those tanks then closes and again comes up now we believe robotics should help to preserve life help to reduce this kind of risks robotics should go to places like deep sea exploration space exploration mine sweeping operations this kind of applications putting a driver of a car out of job and making driverless cars is very low on our priority i have a unpopular opinion is that innovation is a single man sport it is not a team effort it's not a team game why i say that is uh, when you're thinking of the design and the iteration the numerous iteration that keep running inside your mind continuously every iteration that you think of has got a butterfly effect on the product reliability on the product features on the product utility all of that they are like continuously moving vectors inside the head 
you cannot transpose those moving vectors from one mind to other mind using a two dimensional screen and some spoken words maybe 10 years later we'll have a bluetooth connection between the minds and we can transpose it easily but as of today this whole thing is best done inside one mind we developed an ocean wave to electricity converter now this is in the trial stage the world over it is basically the problem of using this wave action and converting to useful forms like the popular method is to pump fluids and the other method is to rotate a shaft so we managed to rotate a shaft the image that you see on the right side is those drums and underneath there's a seabed unit this is iit madras indoor wave pool so we successfully tested it but we didn't get market traction so we kept it on the attic and moved on we designed a wave powered boat a small boat that has an extraordinary cruising range because it powers itself with the waves when you on a roller coaster you're going up and down your stomach is actually following your body with a small time lag and we use that principle to harness energy for this the innovation can be split very well into two parts one is a concept and second is the engineering concept is what differentiates one innovation from the other concept is what gives value to the client concept is a product of the imagination of the innovator how to redefine the problem statement engineering is application of knowledge that is how you make the equipment more reliable with good engineering my job was mostly my whole productivity was before i get up from my bed in the morning at 6 o'clock with my eyes closed i'm imagining and there's so many ideas that come to you get up scribble the design send it to the team and they take it from there onwards they do that mind is a fantastic design software the smartest design software i believe 90% of the design happens inside the head and only 10% of the shop floor don't take shortcut with the 90% the mind is able to review the design that you plan again and again and it will tell you where to expect the snags rectify that and then go for the prototyping it will save you a lot of time and money the human body and the animal body is some of the best design machines whenever i come to a dark corner in designing i think of these and it opens up many windows for me we had to design a robot that had to go over pipelines and the idea that comes to the mind the image that comes to the mind automatically is a dog with six legs hopping over it without falling down we had to design a robot that had to go down an industrial column without a straight passage down the image that comes to my mind is a snake hanging from a tree and turning its face one to the other we did a small exercise in my office to think how to rescue a baby if it's fallen into a abandoned bore well you know we have this problem so many times the image that comes in the mind is that movie incredibles where the woman has got a hand that extends very long and she still has a hand to operate that's what comes to your mind then you come back to the real world and start planning how do you make a robot that does just that that's how we have been doing all this time i still want to clean all the rivers that we have i believe it is possible i believe you do not have to be iv leak i'm as ordinary person as they come a lot of old fashioned hard work with a dose of logic and common sense and a lot of perseverance an ordinary man can move mountains thank you very much